Today I want to share tricks and tips I learned over the years using Figma that will have speed up your design workflow. So without further ado, let's just jump in. So you already have your screen designed. In this case, it's uh, flight details for me. And I'm moving to a next artboard and I start to design and I want to write a different headline like bookings. I always need to go back and see what's the size and what's the color for this headline. So instead of this, usually what I do, I just create another frame and I just pick the colors that I use. So I use this blue, I use this white and I use this darker blue as well. So to set a global color for this light blue, for example, I just go here to the fill, click on these four dots. And if I click on this plus icon, I can rename this and I can say this is light blue. I can do the same with the white one and with the dark blue as well. I do the same with the fonts as well. So in this case, we have these three styles. I'm just going to grab them here, quickly organize them. And I can do the same to set a global style for it, clicking again on the four dot and hitting the plus icon and set this to H1 bold. And do the same for this one. This is H2 bold and this one is H2 regular. So when we move to the next frame, I don't need to go back and select and pick the color from the previous frame. Instead of this, I can just click on the four dots and I can select the colors that we defined globally. And I can do the same with the fonts. For example, we are having a different headline here, booking, but because we already defined this, we can just quickly select from the global styles and it's already there. Or if I want the rectangle with the white color, I just quickly draw a rectangle and I set the white from the global styles. And this even works with effects. So for example, this card has a drop shadow. So if you go to effects, you can see the shadow is here, but I can, we don't want to copy this and paste this all the time. So I am going to define a global effect style as well. I'm just saying card shadow. And when I go back to my next frame, I can just go to the effects and select card shadow. For example, for these cards, we can create auto layout easily. I'm just going to drag this card here so we can see what kind of elements it has. So this one has a background, the card, the white card. It has an icon, it has text and it, it has a button. If I want to set the padding at the spacing between them, I need to do it manually holding down Alt and see how far is it from the top and how far is it from the bottom. And I need to adjust the card and I need to adjust the button as well. So instead of this, what we can do, just select this group that it contains the icon, the background, the text and the button. And simply I'm just going to hit Shift A and that will create auto layout. If you hover on the top of it, you can see the paddings on the top and the bottom. And we have a new panel here called auto layout. So for example, this one is between elements. We can set that to 12. This is from the padding left and right. I'm going to set that to 16. Padding top and bottom. I'm going to set this to 24. But what if I want to stretch this element. Now everything inside this container stays on the left, but I want the button to stretch to the left. I can go to the auto layout properties under these four dots. I can set spacing mode to space between proportionally set the elements apart that is inside this auto layout. But for example, I don't want for this first two to set apart. So I am going to put this to auto layout as well, just holding down shift and hitting A. And now if I resize it, the icon and the text stays on the left, but the button stays on the right. What we can do to make our workflow more productive 
is to create a component. I'm just selecting my button and I'm going up here and uh, click on this diamond icon. And then if you see on the layer panel, it has the same icon as well. This indicates that this is the master component. So whenever I duplicate this master component, it will create a child component that has a different symbol, as you can see in the layer panel. And now I can drag this and put back to the auto layout card that we already created. So for example, whenever the client or the team decides that we want to use a different color, I can just go to my master component of the button and change from the global size and change it to a different color and it changes on the child component as well. Best thing with components that you can even add variants to it. So if you go again up here and hit this plus diamond icon, you can just quickly add a variant. You can see there is a different properties panel again. And for example, for the property, let's say this is the state because we want a default state that we already have named variant two, but I want to rename it to pressed and I want to use a different color for this. And whenever I want to change my buttons to a different state, I can just select the child component and select pressed and it changes. And you can create as many variants as you want. In this next section, I want to talk about some mouse movements. For example, I want to select this price. I want to grab this price out of the frame or just select it. I can click on it. I can even do more clicking and it just goes deeper into the frames as you can see on the layer panel. So what I can do instead, I can just hold down command and click on the element that I want to select. So for example, I want to grab this out of the frame. I can quickly do that. But what if I want to select all of these elements, but not the card background? I can actually do that to hold down command and just draw a rectangle with my mouse and wherever the mouse goes and covers it's going to select those items so in this case we just selected all these items that is inside of this box so if I want to duplicate it I can hold down alt option and just grab it out to this other frame the next one is duplicating. For example, I want to duplicate this frame. I just hold down option and drag with my mouse. But what if I want this frame to stay in the same position? I can just simply hold down shift as well. I can only move it on the horizontal axis. The next one is zooming. How can I zoom on my artboard quickly? If I want to find something, I can just go up here and zoom to 50. But there is an easier way if you hold down command and you scroll with your mouse. So wherever I hover my mouse, Figma will zoom into that section. For example, I want to zoom into this New York card. I can just hover and scroll in and out. Or for example, I want to zoom into this area to see this headline better. I can just scroll. And now let's talk about some shortcuts. Actually, you can see all of your shortcuts. If you go to the right bottom corner and click this question mark and you can switch between those tabs and you can see all of the shortcuts. Let's start with the basic ones. For example, if you hit V, that's the move tool. If you hit F, that's the frame tool. So you can create a frame. If you hit R, that's the rectangle tool. If you hit O, that's the ellipse tool. P is the pen tool, so you can draw like lines or shapes. T is the text tool, so you can quickly write something. H is the hand tool, so you can grab your artboard and move it around. By the way, you can do this with the space as well, if you hold down space. So for example, if I want to move this rectangle down by 10 pixels, I can just hold shift and press the down arrow or the up arrow, wherever you want to move. And actually you can change the notch amount under preferences and notch amount, and you can even set this to 40. And if I hold on shift and press the down arrow, it steps down by 40 pixels. 
This is one of my favorite things actually to copy styles from an other object. For example, I can copy style uh, from this one, the color and the shadow as well. I can just hold down command and option and C and then go to this gray object and hold down command option V and then it's pasting the same style. Another favorite that I use is the, the command D. So now I'm just going to hold down Alt option and just going to drag it and you can see the spacing between them is 20. But if I want to have more duplicates, I just constantly hit Command D and it's going to space them evenly. So it's going to have the same spacing from the first duplicate. Now let's move on to shapes. There are many shapes in Figma, rectangle, line, arrow, ellipse, uh, polygon, star, but these are have little tricks. For example, if you draw a rectangle and you hover over the corners, there are these little circles that you can grab and you quickly set the radius. Or if you draw a line, in the properties panel you can set the round edges or you can even set arrows. The next one is the ellipse. For example, if you want to create like a, a chart, like a circle chart. When you hover on this circle, you can draw a different sweep. For example, I want something like this. And if you grab the middle, you can set the width, but you can still move this around. So this is super cool. Or you can even set like percentage for them. And you can always round the corners. And if you want to rotate it, it still rotates around the center axis. The next one is the polygon, which is one of my favorite actually. And I'm sure you notice there is this space underneath, but there is a reason for it. If you grab the corners, you can make like hexagon or octagons. So this is super helpful. That's why we actually have this space underneath because it's morphed into it morphs into different shapes and we can use this one for example and give a big corner radius and we can use it as a mask or something but my all-time favorite is the star because again you can modify and it morphs into different shapes as well and let's say I want to create like a settings icon with the star shape I can quickly do that to modify the ratio here and modify the corner radius. I just need to draw a circle here. I'm copying the same style. And we have a settings icon. It's pretty awesome. And we can still modify this. So it's just amazing. So this next tip is not that detailed, but it helps to speed up my workflow. If you notice, this bottom area doesn't have thumbnails. And how to do that? For example, let's just select this one because this one doesn't have. I can go to the page, create a new one. And I need a frame that is 1600 and 960. And I'm going to quickly grab a screenshot from this project. I just put the headline here so we know what this project is about. And the trick is to right click on the frame when it's selected. So you need to select it first, right click it and there is this option to set as thumbnail. So now if we go back to the recent files, it should be there. So as you can see, almost all of my files has thumbnails. So it's easier for me to quickly find a project that I want to work on. I hope you guys like these tips. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see me how I design an e-commerce website using these techniques, check out this video.